Thank you and welcome again to the Mesa City Council meeting for the evening of Monday, February the 13th. All of our council are present. We will begin this meeting with an invocation offered by Pastor Mike Cash of East Valley Will Baptist Church, uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. So Pastor Cash, we invite you to the microphone. Please stand for the prayer and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. You may let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have today to come to you. Thank you for this time and this place. We thank you for our mayor, vice mayor, the council members, all the city officials and elected elected officials and uh, employees, those who work behind the scenes. Lord, oftentimes we know things we don't see and understand uh, that they have to deal with and go through. We just ask that you give them wisdom. We ask for this meeting in particular, uh, that you would get the glory and uh, everything that goes forth in this city, Lord, we ask that you would be honored and glorified. Again, we thank you for um, a place that we live in where we can uh, freely make our wants known, our wishes known. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, not only of this country, but in this state and this city, Lord, that we have to do the things that we freely want to do. And Lord, again, I ask that you would be with us in this meeting. We thank you for being our Savior, our guide for being one wiser than we are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. The, um, First item on our agenda tonight is awards, recognitions, and announcements. Uh, and uh, we do have one proclamation under this agenda item, and it will be to recognize February as Black History Month. This month encourages people to become more knowledgeable about black heritage and honor the many black leaders who have contributed to the progress of our nation. Tonight we have with us members of Mesa's Human Relations Advisory Board the National Forum of Black Public Administrators, and the Mesa East Valley MLK Committee. Thank you all for being here tonight. Before we present you with the proclamation and take a group photo, I'd like to invite Marcus McKinner to say a few words on behalf of all the organizations. Actually, Travis. <laughs> Travis Cutright, our uh, great Chief Information Officer. Travis. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, thank you for this proclamation, for this uh, recognition of Black History Month. Um, to move forward in a progressive manner, we have to remember where we came from. So this is important, and we really appreciate the city of Mesa uh, recognizing this, this important month to us in our history. Thank you, Travis. Thank, thank you, you to you and to all the organizations that we're honoring tonight. We had a wonderful MLK parade and event, and a lot of work went into that. That was our 25th anniversary MLK event, yes. a celebration in Mesa, Arizona. So that was a, a particularly meaningful event for us. But thank you. I'd invite council now to come down, and, and if, for, if, for everyone who's representing one of those organizations, if you'd please come up and join us in a photograph, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate 
Thank you again to everyone who came to help us uh, kick off that celebration. Um, next item on our agenda is the consent agenda. We'll invite Mr. Kevin Christopher forward to read that agenda. Mr. Christopher. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. These are the items on the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk will be considered as a group by the City Council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion unless a council member or a citizen requests in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered as a separate item. Item two, approval of minutes of previous meetings as written. Item 3A, Act on Liquor License Application for Sauce, Pizza and Wine, 3426 East Baseline Road. Item 3B, Act on Liquor License Application for Bow Your Battle, One Day Event, March 4th, 9760 East Cadence Parkway. Item 3C, Act on Liquor License Application for Ultimate Imaginations, One Day Event, February 25th, 1 North McDonald. Item 3D, Act on Liquor License Application for Chipotle, 9259 East Ray Road. Item 4A, Act on Bingo Application for Good Life RV Resort, 3403 East Main Street. Item 5A, Approving Contract for Police Evidence Facility, Construction Manager at Risk, Guaranteed Maximum Price Number 2. This project is funded by 2018 and 2022 Public Safety Bonds and Public Safety Sales Tax. Item 5B, Approving Contract to Purchase a Dispatch Recorder for the Mesa Fire and Medical Department. Item 5C, approving three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for pavement marking materials and traffic paint for the transportation department. Item 5D, approving three-year term contract with two one-year renewal options for five master job order contracts for well site drilling construction services. Item 5E, approving three-year cooperative term contract with two years of renewal options for overhead crane and hoist testing, maintenance and repair services for the water resources department. Item 5F, approving three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for engineered wood, fiber material, and installation for the Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Department. Item 5G, approving dollar limit increase to the three-year term contract and two years of renewal options for landscape maintenance services for parks, retention basins, and sports fields for the Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Department. Item 6A, approving resolution to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the Arizona Department of Health Services, allowing the city to receive reimbursement for the Mesa Fire and Medical Department participating in an immunization program for children and adults, including flu and COVID-19 vaccinations. Item 6B, approving a resolution to enter into a memorandum of understanding with Maricopa Association of Governments for an arterial life cycle program project on Power Road, East Maricopa Floodway to the Santan Freeway Loop 202. Item 6C, approving a resolution to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the Mesa Unified School District to establish an opt-in library card sign-up for students through the school enrollment process. Item 6D, approving a resolution to enter into an agreement with the United Food Bank for a grant of coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds. Item 6E, approving a resolution extinguishing a portion of a water and sewer easement located at 5215 South Ellsworth Road to allow for commercial development on the property. Item 7A, introduction of ordinance regarding zoning case 22-916 for property located west of Lindsay Road on the north side of Southern Avenue. Rezone with a bonus intensity zone overlay and site plan review to allow for an office development. Item 7B, introduction of ordinance regarding zoning case 22-977 for property located south of McKelps Road and west of Ellsworth Road. Rezone with a bonus intensity zone overlay to allow for development of a single resident subdivision. And item A, approving ordinance amending Title III, Chapter 2, Section 1 of the Mesa City Code, governing the organization of the city's fire department to reflect the name Mesa Fire and Medical Department and to add language describing the expanded scope of services. Mayor and Council members, these are the items on the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Christopher. Ms. Mosley, are there any blue cards for any item currently on the consent agenda? No, Mayor, none have been received for consent. All right, thank you. We have a motion made by Ms. Spilsbury for approval of the consent agenda, seconded by Mr. Freeman. Please vote. I'm sorry, I clicked the wrong button. Can you do your motions again? Okay. That's too fast. Thank you. Uh, so Ms. Spilsbury has the motion, seconded by Mr. Freeman. Please vote. Thank you, that, uh, the consent agenda passes unanimously. Uh, the item we have off of the consent agenda today is uh, our items 9A and 9B. This is for rezoning and development agreement for property, property generally located east of Gilbert Road and, and on the south side of East McDowell Road for the development project commonly known as Sweetwater or Homestead at Lehigh Crossing. Ms. Mosley, I know we have a, uh, several blue cards. Have you received any additional blue cards since we started the meeting? I have received one more to speak and one not to speak, and we also have one caller on the line. Okay, this is the last call for blue cards, so I see there's one behind you as well. 
Um, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and bring those up. <clears throat> I know that we also uh, received prior to, thank you very much, prior to the meeting, uh, we received several online comments. Uh, you gave me these numbers earlier. We had 33 online comments received, 31 of which opposed the zoning case and two supported it. Uh, I'll also note that in addition to the online comments, we received uh, several emails on this case, uh, 22 to be exact, 18 opposed the zoning and four supported. Okay, so having said that, uh, we will begin hearing from those of you who are, have come to let us know how you feel about the zoning case. And I'll just take them in the, in the order that they are in, uh, that, that they have in the, the stack in front of me. Uh, we have set aside three minutes for each speaker and we have several speakers. So we'll be here a while. Feel free if someone has said something that you agree with and you can say, never mind, I agree with Susie. Or if you want to designate a, a spokesman to cover two or three people, all of those things uh, would be appreciated. But we'll, we'll uh, start with the top of the stack. And again, uh, at, at the end of three minutes, we'd ask that you conclude your comments. First, you will hear from uh, David Kipp. This is in reverse order. Reverse order. Okay. You didn't give me a chance to prepare, huh? Here? Yes, go ahead. Mr. Kipp, you have three, uh, three minutes. Okay, so my name's David Kipp. I live at 1610 East Hermosa Vista, which is in one, within one mile of this uh, project. Um, my opposition to the project is that it doesn't meet the same uh, population density as the rest of the neighborhood. This area is unique in Mesa that most of the uh, residents live in single family homes on relatively large lots. And uh, there's nothing similar within one and a half miles of this location. To the north is Lehigh, to the northwest is, sorry. To the northwest is uh, the Pima Indian Reservation and the south and to the south, east, and west are both um, custom neighborhoods with single-family um, single homes. Um, I think the uh, building of a roundabout on the uh, 101, I mean the 202 and McDowell, I think will contribute to a lot of congestion and traffic. Um, that's, that's the main thing I want to say. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Kim. Next, we'll hear from Stephanie Burnham. Stephanie Burnham. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you. I do agree with the previous speaker. Um, I did send an email, but I am going to read it. Our Lehigh area is noted for being a more rural feel within the city limits area. The city of Mesa, like every city, needs different neighborhood zones, if you will, to have a comfortable diversity for their current and future citizens. There's nothing wrong with having an area where there are bigger properties, bigger homes, a place where families can spread out and live in a less stressful, less high traffic, um, <clears throat> you know, an easier, quieter place to live. Not everyone feels comfortable living with hundreds of other people stacked on top of one another in buildings that are crammed together. No matter how th good the amenities are or how luxurious the apartments are, they still amount to a lot of people packed in one small space. No multifamily housing will raise property values in Lehigh or the Hermosa Vista neighborhood. <clears throat> it is the nature of apartments to be used harder because of turnover of residents. What are these things gonna look like in 20 to 30 years, even 40? Homes in our area that are 40 and more years old look great. There's a lot of properties that are well taken care of because people who come to our area come to stay. <clears throat> we don't feel, the neighbors and I that I have talked to, that this is an appropriate use of that little piece of property. We know that it's a difficult one, but we feel like there is a better fit that something can be come up with. And we ask, why didn't the city open up that land to acre lot parcels so that a few more people can build there and have the kind of lifestyle that 
is lived in that particular area. The city of Mesa has gained many sources of revenue, which is good up to a point, but it is also really good to maintain what we have that is good and fix what's broken. And we are asking that you not vote yes on this. We are asking that you look at other proposals, other things that can be built there. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Burnham. Uh, Marilyn Crosby. Good evening, Welcome, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, Marilyn Crosby, 2560 North Horn. Um, I want to speak to a subject I'm not sure that many of the attendees today will speak about. Uh, I know that you're gonna hear comments about roundabouts and density, but I want to speak to you about the general plan. The statutory requirement that, uh, that zoning and rezoning ordinances are in compliance with the general plan, and I feel that this project is very much in opposed to the general plan. If you read the plan, it's 238 pages long, so I'll spare us a speed reading episode. But uh, 229 times is the amount of times that the importance of character of a neighborhood is referenced in the general plan. 32 times is the number of times that the sense of place and the importance of that is referred to in the general plan. When you're looking at section 15, which is a litmus test for determining the applicability in a, from a planning and zoning perspective, these are some of the criteria that are supposed to be a test mark for determining it, if it's an applicable project or not. Uh, if I can read from a few other of the, the criteria, it says, is the proposed development consistent with adopted sub-area or neighborhood plans? I would say this is not. Is the proposed con development consistent with the standards and guidelines established by the character type? Does it provide an appropriate infill development? Does it further enhance the intended character of the area? Does it improve safety within the area? Does it add to the sense of place? And I can go on and on with the other requirements that are in here, but the answer is consistently no. And so I have raised the question a few times now, you might remember me from a few weeks ago, that I felt like staff reports, I feel like they tried to do a good job, but I don't feel like they actually captured the sentiment of this project and the opposition within the neighborhoods that surround it. I am opposed to the traffic of the roundabout. I've read, this, I've read different studies myself about roundabouts, and it is not a cut and dry answer if roundabouts are safer or more dangerous. In this circumstance, the data indicates that it is more dangerous because you're talking about a multi-lane roundabout. You're also talking about other complicating factors of hills and freeway entrances and things that make this a very definitively more difficult roundabout than others. I would ask that you seriously consider opposing this. I know that there's been a lot of consideration and outreach to you, which I think says something in itself. I thank you for your time and wish you a good decision. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, Connor Crosby. Okay, he didn't check the, uh, well, I wish to speak. Is Connor Crosby here? Is that a relative of yours, Marilyn? He is stuck in traffic, but I can tell you he's opposed. Okay, <laughs> thank you. That's noted. Uh, Michelle McCroskey. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. All right, I'm short, I'm short here. Um, well. Michelle McCroskey, 3021 North Chestnut Circle in Mesa. Um, thank you for hearing our comments today. I promised you the last time I spoke with you that I would come back with some information we found. So number one, we did reach out to ADOT again to discuss the roundabout and everything else, but because we didn't really have a different plot plan, um, their decision was there's not, we don't really have any place to go until you do, and we felt like that we'd accomplished enough there. But we did have a very good meeting with planning and zoning. We found out some information of why some of our feedback, we talked about history not being correctly reflected. 
we found out why. And we gave, um, we got a lot of good information for them. We did understand more of the challenges of that parcel. Um, but that really wasn't depressing because we realized there were some things we probably could have done to help that process along. To the planning department's credit, um, I actually noted that they updated their PowerPoint. So they accurately reflected as much as they could the history of all the different meetings we've had on that. And we are wiser still the next time we have a project like this to work with them on. So my assignment on this project was to focus on the traffic and safety issues of the project. And I'll admit that this was kind of a steep learning curve for me. I'm not the traffic engineer. Um, but I have done my research. And so the first thing I did was I read the traffic study um, that was done by the analysis. And the comments I can tell you on that is simply that they chose um, some data that was 2018. And, they, and the growth projected for that was 3%. So they, basically, they used old data, and they underestimated the growth in this particular area. They could have done better on that. Um, but the most important thing that I got out of this was on page four where they projected the traffic coming out of this project if they move forward on it. 1,906 vehicles a day. Every weekday, 1,900 cars, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Every day, every weekday that that project is going to be in place. And so that's why we have a roundabout. So I also sent all of you the studies on, um, some studies on roundabouts and what makes them so challenging here. If you and I were talking about a single line roundabout, we would all raise our hands that this is a great deal. But you cannot put a single lane roundabout on McDowell. There's too much traffic. And the studies are pretty clear that if you put a two lane roundabout on that intersection, you're gonna increase collisions by 62%. In all transparency, injuries will probably be down because quite frankly, when we go around a roundabout, we're not going at that high of a speed. But they do, 62%. And so if you vote to move forward on this, that's basically what you're voting on. So um, from a safety standpoint, any way you cut it, um, a two lane roundabout is gonna increase collision rates by 62%. Um, that project is not the right fit for this area. And you're going to hear some more histories about the history and why this happened and yada, yada, and that's not my part of the presentation. I know a lot of you feel pressured to vote for this. I get it. Very uncomfortable, very awkward. Um, some of you and I know really well, and I hate being on the other side of an argument with you. But safety is safety, and I can't ignore the facts. So if you choose to move forward on this and you have the documentation showing the, the studies on a two-lane roundabout, then you have to accept the responsibility for the collision rates that are coming. So thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Morgan Porter. Welcome, Morgan. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I'd like to speak to you on a different point of things. As many of you know, tomorrow is Arizona's birthday. And part of what makes Arizona is Lehigh. Lehigh came before Arizona became a state. Many people in Lehigh and all of their families came before Arizona was a state. And I would like to think back into the old 1800s of what would they think of how things are going at this moment. Would they think that a use of nine acres, even if it cannot be farmed, would be a great place to put four, five, six hundred people. I choose to believe that that is not what they would choose. They would choose to put a park or single family homes where people could raise and grow their own food of cattle, swine, horses to go ride on that canal. I believe that they would choose that option instead. And that is the option that we are based on in this area, in this city. The city became a city because of Lehigh. So I believe that there should be opportunity for other options. Our opportunity came from these people. They trekked across many, many miles to get to this area and grow a life. And so I believe that there should be opportunity for other people to come in and give options that are with the zoning requirement, especially not with something of a change so big. I believe that they should you know, have an option for a park like there has been presented in earlier years that got denied because of funding. I do believe that that should be in consideration due to the fact that that was a promise that the city made when they purchased this property, that that land would become a park. We had City of Mesa Legal Council come in 
to a Lehigh community meeting and say that there is a park going onto that property and that promise has not yet been fulfilled. I believe that this land would not be there if those promises had not been made. And just think, I know many members that go riding along that canal. If there are apartment buildings, there are small children that live in apartment buildings. Small children like big animals. Small children like to throw things at big animals. That canal is a very dangerous place for horses if people throw things. I myself have lost a horse on that canal just from being scared. I cannot imagine what screaming children, even if they are well-behaved children, all children scream. I cannot imagine being there losing my horse due to something like that because of such a big area. I do hope that you keep the promise of that land being made a park. I do hope that you take this into consideration of what this city has been founded on. Founded on promises, it's been founded on opportunity, and opportunity is what should be given to others to keep this land what it was designed for. And I do hope you have a great decision and a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. Robert Walker. <coughs> Welcome, Robert. Good evening. My name's Robert Walker. Uh, 1140 East Sorensen, I, uh, I've lived there 45 years, um, moved there as a young man. I was there before the 101 was put through um, and uh, all the changes that went during that time. And I think the city fought long and hard for us to have access under Gilbert Road and across McDowell because we have access for horses right through there. Um, it seemed like it'd be a real shame to... Uh, plop a bunch of apartments there, and, and that would be the only access for those apartment dwellers to come to our neighborhoods is through those, and it would make a, maybe a dangerous situation for us to ride horses through there. Um, I, I like what Morgan said about the park. That'd be a great thing to put there. Um, nine, uh, nine custom homes would be nice there, too, with horse privileges. Um, just hate to see us lose that pathway to to uh, it's a good riding toward the river. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Robin Fenn. Welcome, Robin. Thank you. Um, I've not been a, a resident of Lehigh for the last century, but my wife's family has been. Uh, I married into it, and we moved into uh, our home at 3035 North Gilbert Road uh, before it was ever part of the city. And when the city came along and, and annexed us in, they told us that, that all of Lehigh, which at that point Lehigh went clear out to Val Vista, even claimed it out to Granite Reef Dam, that it would all be one-acre properties. And they have backstepped on that because we have condominiums and smaller homes built further east on Lehigh Road. And problems are starting to crop up with that high density. Now, you can have problems happen anywhere, but when you have secure families and people that live there, then you have a much more stable environment. The second thing that I think they're really missing the point on here is they put a horse path right down Gilbert Road to connect into this canal horse path, except they didn't put a crossing across the freeway for horses to ride on. So they have to use the sidewalks in order to gain access to it. And if you put a roundabout on McDowell, it's gonna be nothing but a shooting match for what car can hit what horse as they're going through that intersection because there won't be a designated crossing for the horses. And in our section that's north of McDowell, there's probably over 200 horses that are living in that area right now. So I'm definitely opposed to anything other than, I like the idea of a park, but rather than a park, I'd like to see a horse or equine facility put in there that would better service the community of the entire Lehigh area. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Uh, Wendy Fenn. Thank you. 
thank you. Um, my name is Wendy Fenn. Um, our family's been on the same property for 100 years. They're generation Lehigh. My grandfather helped settle the Lehigh Valley. I know Mark Freeman, you know him, George Gilbert Hawes. Um, my mom was born and she died in Lehigh. Um, those born in Lehigh knew my grandfather. He had a chicken farm. After World War II, the American government contacted my father, um, my grandfather, because he had such a great ratio of fertilized eggs that they wanted fertilized eggs sent to Germany because there were no chickens left over there to feed them over there. So my grandfather shipped his chicken eggs over to Germany. Also during World War II, the US government was trying to uh, put the Japanese families like in concentration camps type of thing. Um, and we had a lot of good Japanese families that lived in Lehigh. The Sikahimas, the Ishikawas, the Satos, for instance. Um, they were not allowed to leave or not allowed to cross Main Street. So my grandfather would go and buy their groceries for them and return their change to them. Um, Lee was, Lehigh was a community back then that helped people. And now it's turning into how can I get rich? How can I pad my own pockets? It's community where we need to look out for one another and have our acre lots or bigger so that we can live the lifestyle that we were promised. I hope you vote against this development. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. David Betty, might be, did I pronounce your last, Beatty. Beatty. excuse me, Mr. Beatty, thank you. I knew I was wrong as soon as it came out of my I've mouth. i called worse. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Beatty. <clears throat> Good evening, and I appreciate your time and listening. My name is David Beatty. <clears throat> I live at 2636 North Stapley Drive. And uh, my family first moved to Lehigh in 1969. So a as you're starting to hear, there's a lot of vested interest. There's a lot of people that have been there. I'm down with my children and grandchildren. We've had four generations there. I have friends that have six generation generations. So it is not uncommon. So. <clears throat> Would somebody in an apartment complex know that? They might know their next door neighbor. Well, we know each other and we work together. And <clears throat> one thing I'd like to, to really bring up is uh, I personally contacted people around that property and I was amazed that, that the ones I contacted did not know what was going on. They had not been contacted. And I contacted property that was as close to you as you could get to that property. And they did not know what was going on. So I don't see this as an open and transparent project, especially after it was filed under another project to eliminate all the previous opposition. Well, <clears throat> as you can see, I'm passionate about it because <clears throat> the way I see this apartment complex is like dropping a football stadium into my backyard. And it is definitely not compatible. <clears throat> um, th they may have complied with the 500 foot rule, but that's because there isn't anybody within 500 feet. So nobody was contacted. <clears throat> um, they knew what the property was zoned for when they bought it. I have to live within, within the zoning. They can too. It, at the point where they asked for it to be rezoned, that's where I get to speak up and, and say what I want. <clears throat> uh, 222 units is a long ways from being able to put eight or nine homes on that property as it is currently uh, zoned, which means you're gonna probably have to allow for about 400 cars. Can you imagine those going in and out every day from what it is now? Um, those residents are not gonna have a vested interest in this community. You're gonna have higher calls for service. 
more police, more fire. <clears throat> Just ask your police department, your police department, uh, and firemen uh, how many calls they go to apartment complexes. Uh, you're going to have a definite increase in calls. Uh, the roundabout. <clears throat> you know, everybody's talking about the studies. Well, I have a brother that lives next to the 202 and McKellips, the roundabout on the east side. And I'm going to tell you, it's hilarious how many wrecks are there. I told him he should put up a, a camera and post YouTube videos. Uh, <clears throat> it's no joke. There's going to be a lot of wrecks. And, and it is not compatible with the, the, the horses in the area. So uh, looks like I'm out of time. I appreciate your time. I, I, I think you can tell I'm opposed to this project. And I, I hope you vote against it at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beatty. Ryan Sandstrom. Mayor Giles, good to see you. Mr. Freeman, members of the council. My name is Ryan Sandstrom. I live at Forest Knowles Estates, which is approximately 0.8 miles from this uh, project. We live at 1655 East Menlo. Uh, Councilman Freeman Mark, has had, I've had the privilege of seeing him at my home, um, knows very much the dynamic of the neighborhood that we live in. Um, just a little personal history. I'm from Mesa, grew up here my whole life. Um, my dream was to move back and to live into, friend, into Friendly Cove Forest Knowles. The reason for that is because I have a young family and it is absolutely the most conducive place in my opinion to raise a young family because it has larger areas where you can grow up and spread your roots. Um, two years ago we bought a home that I've saved a lot of money to do and almost paid a million dollars for that home. And then all of a sudden I find out on Saturday, literally Saturday of last week that this project was proposed. And I thought to myself, what did I just get myself into? I've been hoping to live in this neighbor, my neighborhood my whole life, and now all of a sudden it's gonna be overrun with a, with a quick little development to make some money. Um, to be clear, I am pro real estate, I'm pro owner, I'm pro, pro business development, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur myself, I, I, I am encouraging people to do that kind of thing, but not here. This is not the right place to put 222 units, and Councilman Freeman, I think there is a better use for this property. There's been a lot of proposals, whether you use a third acre, half acre, one acre, I don't care what the, what the particular size is, but putting 222 units on three, on three stories and encroaching literally on everybody who's been there for a very, very long time is just gonna destroy the nature of this area. Um, I will consider moving. I know my property value is going to decrease. I know this is gonna be a huge impact on my kids and I wanna speak to that very clearly. This area is zoned for Hermosa Vista Elementary. Three of my four kids go to Hermosa Vista. If you have 222 apartments that go into this area, how many kids, 400 kids, 500 kids? Has the council considered what the school impact is gonna be? My kids already are very busy at their classes and we moved here because of those schools. And now all of a sudden you're gonna say, oh sorry, we have to now build another school and now we have to go find some other area for your kids to go. I think that would be devastating. I think you really have the potential to do something valid today and do something wonderful and, uh, and help a lot of these people. We're all, the vast majority of the people here today are in opposition of this proposition because it matters to us as people, it matters to us as, as property owners, it matters to us and, and our kids. Um, I think it would be a real shame to allow this project to go forward. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ryan. Nikki Rousseau. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Nikki Rousseau. I live at 1731 East Menlo. Uh, a little closer to this development than Ryan or Dr. Kipp. Um, and my concern is that the developer is asking for multiple exceptions to, from my rating anyway, that, that this is what it should be, but we're asking for this. Why is the city considering granting those exceptions? To, to cram in to this small place um, all these apartments. Uh, if they want, if they purchase this land and as someone previously said and knew what it was zoned for, then they should develop it that way. If they want a zoning exception or they want a change to put multifamily units in there, then they need to, to give a proposal that fits within what the rules already are. But clearly this development is too big for this piece of land or they wouldn't be asking for all those exceptions to the rules that are already in place to make sure that Mesa is safe and comfortable and um, 
I would be interested to hear why the city council is considering granting all those exceptions. Um, it's too many units in too small a space, and I do understand um, the need to make economic decisions. Uh, I moved back to Arizona about a year and a half ago from the Chicago area, grew up here, and I have, I understand the economic pressures, but this isn't the answer. Um, and, and to speak to that, I would ask, are any of these units gonna be affordable housing? Has anybody raised that with the developer? Um, you know, the, the cost of rent in Mesa is prohibitive and people who have grown up their whole lives here can't afford to live here anymore because of the way that property values have skyrocketed. Um, so who you're going to attract with this development is not long-term Mesa people. You're gonna attract the people who have been changing the character of Mesa and Arizona over the last two decades, nearly two decades that I've been gone. It's a different place than where I grew up and this will make it an even more different place. Um, so I would encourage the council to stick to your guns on the rules that make Mesa what it is and not grant those exceptions. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Kim Van Ripper. Hello, my name is Kimberly Van Riper. I live at 505 East Lehigh Road. Uh, and thank you for the time to speak this evening. When we speak about this property, you cannot speak about it without recognizing the historic relevance of it. Crisman was one of the founding fathers of Mesa. And the freeway was altered due to some of these historic homes. Right now we're looking at taking that heritage and there's a historic overlay if I believe still on this property that's going to be lifted uh, with your vote tonight. You know, you're taking away something really special, something that you can't get back and replacing this historic relevance with apartments is not something to be proud of. And it's something you should think really, really hard on. This was supposed to be a park, Lehigh Falls. No, it was, uh, uh, you know, there were lawsuits on this property about uh, easements uh, and accessibility. And finally, it comes down to apartments. It's clearly not compatible. People in the area feel like it's not compatible. Uh, and it does nothing to speak to Mesa's history, to the original homestead of one of the founding fathers, and this shouldn't go unsaid. I heard a story about a lemon tree, that it was a record-setting lemon tree on this property. It produced 1,800 pounds of lemons. This is what I heard during one season. There was a market there where people went to go get produce, and now it's gonna be paved and made into apartments. Please consider all of the things like this, and at very least, maybe push this off and allow some of the neighborhoods who haven't had a chance to really get into this and look at it and give their input to do so. Please put it off, set it aside for tonight, or vote no. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Uh, Kim Clark. Welcome, Kim. Kim Clark. My address is 3007 North Gilbert Road, Mesa. Our family's been a resident of the Lehigh community for more than 30 years. When I spoke, I spoke at the initial uh, public hearing on October 20, October 2021, and again in the hearing uh, on July 27th, 2022, regarding the zoning change. At the October meeting, I presented a petition that was signed by, I actually got 156 signatures, uh, opposing the development. I also presented results from an online survey where 59 of 61 respondents did not approve of it. Numerous other people also, as has been mentioned, have also, has also have also submitted comments and spoken, spoke in opposition to the project. Unfortunately, the devel developers' efforts to move the project forward have not addressed these concerns. Uh, in addition, the staff report indicates the modifications of, to the development plan they, that 
They satisfied the city's standards. However, they failed to deal with the unique aspects of the area and respond to issues voiced by many in the Lehigh community. As we're trying to get the message across, Lehigh is a historic, active agricultural area with acre plus lots and livestock privileges. Horses and other livestock are common in this long established suburban ranch family community. The proposed apartment complex is adjacent to the Lehigh sub area planned and will have a significant impact on the surrounding neighborhoods. The substantial increase in population and associated increase in traffic and proposed roundabout will present safety issues for livestock and feed haulers and even horseback riding. We have already seen an increase in auto, traf auto traffic in Lehigh, which is increasing the risk of accidents. I think there was one accident with a horse already. Furthermore, the buffer zone highlighted in this, in this, by the city actually uh, directly connects and affects surrounding neighborhoods through planned injection points and accesses to paths along the canal and equestrian trails. So before a decision is made that will irreversibly transform the community, please consider that this is one of the last areas of Mesa characterized by its long, well-established history. Please help us preserve this history, which is embodied within the Lehigh community. We urge you to consider an alternative use of this land that is more compatible with the area and will help retain some of the character that attracts people to the city of Mesa. Now, not reading off my notes, I know there's a lot of pressure. Um, there's a lot of people moving here, the state, uh, developer probably even federal pressure to try and increase housing and add, add more housing. Uh, but there has to be alternative sites that are more suitable for this density housing. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. That concludes all the blue cards that I have. Um, is, mostly, have there been any, any other cards submitted? Uh, no, Mayor, but we do have Scott Neal on the line that was calling in to speak. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I would have had him go first if I'd been uh, aware of that. Let's go ahead and invite him to, so he, he's holding on the telephone, correct? Correct, please. Yeah. Should be Steve Neal. Steve Neal, Mr. Neal, are you with us? Uh, he submitted a card with Scott. Okay, I'm sorry. Scott Neal. Mr. Neal, can you hear us? Mr. Neal, you need to unmute your phone if you're on the line. Mr. Neal, if you can hear us, would you uh, go ahead and unmute your telephone and speak up and we'd be happy to hear from you. All right, speak up if, uh, if and when you get this message. <laughs> uh, if we, maybe we'll hear from Mr. Neal, maybe we won't. At, at this point, uh, I didn't... Can, can you hear me now? Oh, thank can you. you hear me now? Thank you, Mr. Neal. Yes, oh. please, go ahead. I wore out star six on the keyboard, sorry. <laughs> so uh, I've been a resident, Steve, Steve Neal, 1154 East Lehigh Road, been a resident for there for 29 plus years, 36 plus in Mesa, so I consider myself a newcomer in my Mesa. Shout out to all my Lehigh neighbors who've been talking today. And to you, the city council and mayor, it's great to have a chance to visit with you about this. Um, yeah, it's really unfortunate that the, the Salt River team of Maricopa Indian community didn't give up a couple hundred feet of land so that the freeway didn't get pushed and end up closing Lehigh Road. And I remember the Chrisman farmhouse being part of that decision also. So that was really unfortunate. It really orphaned this piece of land, left it you know, cut it off from our homely Lehigh Road uh, and left it there. Uh, citrus on it for one time, cold frost got it one year. I, you know, that it was hope, been hoping for some productive use of that land for a long time. And it's been anything but that for this stretch. Um, uh, over the years I've driven by and just taken a curiosity uh, trying to make Lehigh and Mesa a better place driving down that lonely little stretch of road and seeing that the drug deals going on, ended up calling the police many times uh, 
So I do admit it more than once. I think I broke up Lover's Lane. I apologize for that. And um, one night I approached a pickup truck there with the driver slumped over the wheel, very concerned. This is all on the east side of Gilbert Road on that little piece of Lehigh Road. And uh, turns out he was passed out from drinking too much and the police came and hauled him away. A funny incident that happened one time there on this crazy stretch of road was um, drove by and there was a sofa sitting there across the road and I thought well the poor Zan Harrow is not going to be able to drive around that at least somebody ought to move that out of the way for him so he doesn't cuss too much and and uh, so I rolled it over and a set of keys fell out son of a gun if that set of keys didn't have a Mesa Central Post Office key fob on it and so I had the crazy idea we could make Mesa a better place not just Lehigh I went down to the post office and put a note in the post office box. When the couch is in the dump, the keys will be back in this box. And uh, lo and behold, I checked every day. A couple days later, the couch was gone, so the keys were back there. So the crazy thing about this little piece of land is that it's been, you know, just left there to do no good. And every attempt to do some good with it's come to nothing so far. So, you know, I'm I'm in support of doing something. I think you've been doing a lot of due diligence, all you and your staff. So, I guess I'm in support of you. Um, in regards to roundabouts or traffic circles, I I manage them just fine. Uh, I'm in Houston at my daughter's house right now, and they put in five traffic circles in her neighborhood. Oh, four. My wife corrects me. And, uh, you know, the people are adapting to it, and it's working out pretty well. Thank you, Mr. Mr. And, uh, can't see so, the clock. Mr. Neal, you can't see the clock, but you're out of time. So if you could wrap it up for us, please. Right. Well, that's exactly at the end. So I appreciate it very much, and thank you for your time. Thank you for calling in, Mr. Neal. Thank you for your patience. All right, I think that concludes the blue cards that we have. Uh, would the applicant like to speak? Mr. Lake's on the on the line. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, Mayor and Council, Adam Baugh, 25, 25 East Arizona Biltmore Circle. As I wrote down the names of the folks that spoke and kind of figuring out where they live. I recognize that a lot of them live, you know, west and north, somewhere between one to three miles away. And I ask myself, why would folks who live not immediately next door, but within that drive distance, care? And I think it's because Lehigh's a special place. And so while you may not be proximate, the desire to, I think, um, promote Lehigh as best as possible is important. It's ingrained in them. They've spent time living here. So I certainly can understand and recognize why they would come to a meeting tonight and why they um, have shared their, their feelings and sentiments throughout the length of this case. One of the things that I've seen as your planning has occurred over the years is how changed circumstances require you to revisit old ideas. And one of the things that I'll show you today is what are those changed circumstances that maybe require maybe a fresher look at this site than what historically has been the high. When I look at this site, I see some odd things. Is it, is it up on your guys's? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, it's a remnant parcel. It's a parcel that's been left over after time has passed. And as you see those things, there's an unusual size, unusual shape. But when you drive the property, you have a different experience. The property is depressed below the grade of the freeway. It's depressed below the grade of the McDowell Road, and it's depressed below the grade of the homes to the south. And so what makes it unique, it, and why it maybe needs a different look at it today than historically, is because of these site conditions. Not only that, it doesn't have any actual um, legal access to Gilbert Road, but for only one home per the deed restrictions on the property. So while most of the fo folks and feedback that you heard today are from folks west of Gilbert Road, this property, per the ADOT um, uh, uh, title, only allows one home to use Gilbert Road. There's also some things that are occurring that um, unfortunately make the site um, rather um, 
unsightly, illegal dumping, graffiti, transient activity, some drug use. Um, I think the comment before me by the other speaker mentioned the, the couches that are dumped on the property. Um, like, like the rings on a tree, you could age the life of this property based on the number of couches that have been removed over time. And most recently, a, a ski do that I saw when I was down there. I don't know how somebody got that down there. Here's the view from McDowell Road. This view tells you how depressed it is and the irregular topography that exists on that property today. Or the view from the upper canal that's more than 50 feet taller than it. So at the lowest grade of this canal view, it is still higher than the highest point of any of our buildings. This is consistent with the general plan. It's in the neighborhood and the suburban character area, which does allow multifamily permitted along arterial streets and freeways. It also, your general plan talks about infill sites and the desire to solve the problem of infill sites. Every infill site I've worked on has always had its challenges. They've always had opposition. A lot of that though is because in order to address the difficulty of infill, it does require some careful consideration, deviations, and sometimes density. When we started this case in 2021, or actually Ryan looking at it much sooner than that, we had an RM5 proposal with 350 plus units, four stories tall, um, 50 feet tall. We heard a lot of feedback was regarding views and um, building heights and privacies and density and traffic, um, transient population that was feared would be brought to this property, and even phrases like those people. And as it, now today, even hearing things like um, overcrowding schools, we don't take those concerns lightly. We recognize that that is a sentiment that is often shared with these uses, but it is one that we needed to spend some time addressing. And so as we went forward looking at this, we've been able to make a number of changes, and you'll see that with us today. We've lowered this project and the heights and the stories associated with it significantly. We've lowered our density dramatically, and we've implemented a number of things to improve privacy that I'll get into a little bit further today. One of the key things we worked with, and while you heard a lot of sentiment from Lehigh residents, this is not actually within the boundaries of the Lehigh sub-area per the city's um, policy maps but it is an area that is important to them. But one thing we have done is spend a lot of time in recognizing some of the feedback from those who are most proximate to this, which include the south side development. While that neighborhood is 50 feet taller than us, um, it still was an area of focus for us. So what we ended up working out is we spent some time together here is figuring out how do we lower heights and putting together a good neighbor policy that has um, expectations in place regarding management, landscaping, lighting, we put together stipulations that put a cap on the number of stories, the number of units, the way the light works, the, how the balconies are shielded from things that may be considered unsightly. We put a cap on how we can grade the property. A number of things have gone in place that have been extraordinary that I haven't done in other circumstances, but recognizing the value and importance of this area. This is the timeline of the project, but I think I'm gonna spend most of my time looking at the, the, the letters in blue. That's where we really started to make some significant change between October 2021 to where we are today, working with the Lehigh Improvement District Board, meeting with neighbors one-on-one, -on -one, revisiting the site, understanding where the most sensitive concerns are, re revisiting with ADOT and MESA how to design the roundabout. And as we've progressed through that, finding a way to find support by the Planning Commission in July of this year with unanimous, or excuse me, July of last year with unanimous recommendation approval, yet not bringing the case forward the month after Taking the time it was needed to develop and resolve the issues has been significant here. So as we have modified this request going forward, we've now changed it. It's an RM4 instead of RM5. We've removed all three bedroom units. This will be 60% single bedroom units and the remaining balance 42% um, two bedroom. And that's important distinction because I heard today one of the first times about overcrowded schools. When you have predominantly one bedroom units, you don't tend to have a student age population for schools and, and very even um, minor in the two bedroom units. But we removed the three bedroom units because we heard a concern from neighbors that there would be multi-generational families living in, or, or multi-families living in one um, unit. We wanted to remove that concern. We've updated our traffic analysis and a lot of the numbers that you've heard have been 1906 daily traffic trips. That was based on a traffic study of 350 units. Our new um, plan is 222 units, about 1,400 daily trips. And you should not focus necessarily on the number of trips in a day because if trips are happening at 2 a.m. in the morning, does anybody notice or experience it? 
our emphasis has been on the, tr the peak trips in the morning and the peak trips at night when most of the people are on the road, and those numbers are really low. Also, during this time, we've revisited how we design the roundabout, not the type of roundabout that you experience in Mesa presently today, but a roundabout that hasn't been implemented here but has been implemented in other parts of the state that are larger aprons around them and mountable curbs, part only because of concerns from folks who are worried about horse trailers and how it can impact them. That's a substantial change that we made for, I think, a small minority of people, but a, more, a very, very important group of people in this area. We've also spent a lot of time, and I think this hasn't been mentioned in this meeting or in the preparation for this today, is the benefit of the improved trailhead that requires coordination with three different agencies, SRP, ADOT, the City of Mesa. So this proposal, and I think I'll jump ahead to a slide, this gives you an idea of how the building will look relative to its depressed location. In fact, this is an old rendering. This is a four-story building when we started it. So you can actually, if you can imagine it being um, about 11 feet shorter in height, yet even still, this building, as depressed as it is below the grade, lets you see how um, little impact, if any, it has on the view corridor. What we have done is analyze the traffic study, and this traffic study talks about this development on Gilbert Road alone, if you look at that fourth bullet point, will only add 75 cars a day. Just to give you some perspective, 18,000 trips are happening along Gilbert Road right now, or it's a, um, that's the volume that's occurring. We are 75 cars. It's because we don't have an access point to Gilbert Road. For our project to um, affect Gilbert Road would require a very circular route of traffic to get there. Um, the roundabout itself has capacity to feed up to 40,000 or almost 50 percent, 50, um, 50 cars, 1,000 cars a day. We are significantly below the capacity. And I think staff has done a good job analyzing that for you. Um, I, I said to my client on this, unfortunately, we gave staff too many homework assignments, but they really stepped up and helped <coughs> under, us understand what is the true traffic impact of something like this, not the perception. But the roundabout is important. It's probably one of the most important issues on this case. And as you look at the roundabouts that are designed presently, they have curbs. You can see the curbs there in that picture. And sometimes they can be difficult to maneuver because of that vertical element. What we are proposing is something that you see like this in Wickenburg. The Wickenburg design has a truck apron that goes around it. That truck apron has a mountable curb. And so rather than your trailer hitting a vertical curb and maybe tipping or having an impact like that, it, it works well. In fact, um, we're going from uh, what could be oversized lanes with enough room to expand as needed. These mountable curbs allow for easier travel, but most important, and why I think Strat ADOT and the City of Mesa have looked at this so closely, is it will actually reduce traffic um, impacts and accidents because it forces people to slow as they approach a roundabout rather than make those tight left turns that are occurring right now. The other benefit of it is it prevents U-turns from occurring and also uh, wrong way drivers on on-ramps. And that is a concern you do hear from time to time with freeways. How do we stop these wrong, wrong, wrong way drunk drivers? Um, a roundabout prevents so much of that. At the end of the day, it is safer. It helps traffic slow down. It's proven by the Institute um, of Highway Safety to be 75% less uh, accidents. And at the end of the day, I don't think ADOT would be willing to put their stamp of approval on this design, nor the City of Mesa, unless they felt there was significant value for it in lieu of what the other options might be. Um, the other significant benefit that, co that comes along with this is the trailhead improvements. If you experience this property right now today, you will see trash and debris and thirst buster cups and some drug paraphernalia, but it is not an area that's inviting to anybody to walk, to jog, or to ride a horse. By doing the trailhead improvement here, we are donating land to the city. We will improve that area. That improvement will be approved by SRP and ADOT in cooperation with the city Mesa, but at our cost, and our maintenance um, obligations. And what that does is it fills in, I think, a missing link that the town, the city has spent so much time creating in these trails from Mesa Riverview all the way up to Granite Reef Dam. But in this spot, now that linkage can be fulfilled. And I think that's one of the reasons why we spent so much time trying to get it right. Just the grades of the property and how ADA access works have been important to us, but how those areas are laid out will be critical. And what this will do is create a safer place for the Lehigh residents and the folks in the Hermosa Vista area to also be able to use that trailhead. So at the end of the day, what are some of the benefits? No more illegal dumping, 
No more skidoos on the property. No more transients or, or some of the other trash things that have occurred in there. A new canal scape that actually makes it inviting to walk on. New trailhead improvements, improved vehicular safety. It solves so many of the site challenges that are inherent with site. And when people talk through, why not something else? The reason is something else requires so much expense and cost to solve that it doesn't bear itself out with such low density that people are asking for. I can't do that with nine acres. I and mean, I, clearly a park doesn't create the type of revenue needed to solve these site issues. What we can do is though provide new diverse housing opportunities at a very um, a healthy rent price point that creates new economic development without some of those negative impacts. So at the end of the day, when you think through what is best here and what's changed, I don't think we'd be having this discussion if a freeway had not come here. I think this Lehigh area is a special area and it would have been contiguous with the rest of it, but it's not. It's literally, excuse me, figuratively an island by itself, surrounded by a hill on one side, a freeway on another side, McDowell Road on one other side, and then a little bit of a Gilbert Road on the other side. The fact that it's an island to itself is a circumstance created by ADOT and the way this freeway was aligned. And because it's such a unique, odd-shaped parcel, it requires a different, fresher look than what maybe has historically been. This is not a disruption to Lehigh. This is a recognition of, of how special a place it has been by putting it here and away from any large lots that otherwise might be adjacent to it. I think it complies with the general plan, and that's why staff say we recommend approval. It complies with site plan criteria. It complies um, with this uh, staff recommendation, the unanimous approval from the PNC Commission, a reason why ADOT and, and SRP are so excited about it, and I think the city hopefully too, because it creates benefits that can't be sold to the site today. I have gone on way too long. If I could consider the number of gray hairs we've all generated from something like this, Mark Freeman used to be blonde back when this case started. <laughs> but I appreciate the deliberation that each of you have considered. These residents have something special in this area that cannot be overlooked or understated. But I also recognize that we have a different circumstance today than old Lehigh in the past. And the best way to make something meaningful is something like this that addresses all those challenges in recognition of the impacts that it has today. With that, I'd end my presentation, but of course, standing by if there are any comments. I'd also let you know we have Daryl Truitt from EPS who can maybe answer any questions that you might have regarding some of the traffic information that has been um, presented to you today. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I think, uh, Council, do we have questions for Mr. Brown? Okay, Ms. Spilsbury, go ahead. Hi, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I feel comfortable with the roundabout questions that I had downstairs, um, but I still don't feel like I've gotten a great answer on the neighborhood outreach, especially the neighborhood to the south that's up on the hill. So were they reached out to, did they get the letter in both times? Like, why are we having people say they just found out about it? Yeah, it's a bit perplexing to me too. Um, before my involvement, there was another lawyer participating in the case, but I know Ryan Nelson, the developer on this case, has had multiple meetings with folks in the area. There's been two neighborhood meetings, there have been Zoom meetings. There's been uh, two sets of public letters that have gone out that comply with the state statutes and uh, city ordinances. I've met in some of the neighbors' homes four times or so on the row of houses right behind us. In fact, that led to the letter that you may have seen in your packet withdrawing some opposition. Um, in fact, those meetings helped us guide us to the plan change that we needed. I know that I wrote down a lot of the addresses here, folks that live one to three miles away wouldn't receive notice of it because of their significant distance farther away. But in addition to the mailing requirement, it also requires it to be sent to HOAs and, and registered neighborhood organizations. And the reason why the city does that, the expectation is that gets promoted to whoever it gets sent to within their mailing list. I would say the inverse is true. The fact that folks three miles away are participating in this case lets you know that notice has gone out significantly greater than what is the otherwise requirement. Now, Every case I've had, always there's somebody that mentions notice doesn't receive, but uh, within the boundaries of what's required by statute and the number of means we've had and the newspaper articles and the Facebook posts and next door, it's been more than normal. So when you say the neighborhood uh, or the house is behind it, when you say behind, south do you mean side. south? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, that's my only question for the applicant. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Ball, Ms. Duff? Yes, I have just a question. Um, I see we have a pedestrian pathway and access to the trails. Is there a pedestrian pathway that goes under, the, there's a underpass, I guess, 
Does it go connect to the park and ride? Could you actually walk and ride? Um, no, the, the connection point is at the McDowell, the southeast okay. corner of our site. Where the park and ride is, is on the north side of the 202 freeway. Um, there's no, there's no, way there's no tunnel underneath to that. But it, it does sidewalk. connect to the city's new trailhead and path that will go on that other side of that, of McDowell. So there's a, it's, there's okay. a, there's a linking to a trailhead Trail. that the city is putting in that goes on the trail up, up behind Lehigh Crossing. To the east, right? right. Yes. Right. But there's no way to really get to the park and ride? Oh. Through the pedestrian pathway? Park and ride would be pathway? off of Gilbert Road. Yeah. Oh, you're thinking about the park and ride. Okay, I was just going the other direction towards uh, McDowell. So I don't... It'd be really cool, especially when you have apartments. I don't know how you get... To have an alternative to picking up... We might need a um, suspension transit. bridge to cross. You'd have to get up oh, the road. I, I, I yeah. just thought about it while I was here, and otherwise I would have drove out there and kind of looked at the infrastructure, but it would be really cool if you didn't have to drive across the street <laughs> to pick up transit. Um, um, not the street, but the freeway, but uh, I, I don't know, know if there's any pathways over I think that would require no. some degree of coordination with ADOT. I think we're asking okay. to go under the freeway overpass. Okay. That might be a bit of a challenge. They can just walk along the trail to Gilbert Road and walk up Gilbert Road to the park and ride. Yeah, just get on Gilbert Road, yeah. So. And Gilbert Road has yeah. sidewalks without yeah. intersecting. Okay, all right. There's a, there's a sidewalk that connects. If okay, you could either great. go through the, the pedestrian underpass and then you'd be on the side of the road of the park and ride and then you could walk on the sidewalk along McDowell that would take you to the park and ride. Or you could... Okay, it, good. It, it's about a, it's a quarter mile yeah. walk. Yeah, for anybody who's wanted transit instead of... You know, it's a, a very close to transit, so I want to take advantage of that. That's the only question I have for you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Goforth. <clears throat> so you, in this presentation, it said on Gilbert Road, <clears throat> excuse me, you would only add about 75 cars? Correct. That's because there's no access from our project to Gilbert Road. So for us to get to Gilbert Road, we'd have to exit off McDowell, either go south or north and wrap around to Gilbert Road. My name is Gerald Truitt, EPS Group. We did the traffic study. 75 cars north of McDowell. A lot of people will go south of, of the da McDowell. Oh, or okay. south if they're okay. going to go and get on the freeway and head <laughs> yes. to Phoenix to go to work, or they're going to go the other way. There just aren't that many people that want to head north. out to Shea Boulevard or the Indian okay. Reservation. So north of McDowell. We're okay. just talking about the impact on that neighborhood there. That's north. I think. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you, Mr. Bob. Thank you. I've been told we might have left someone on the phone. Is uh, is Sean Lake holding to uh, to speak? He was on the line, but I don't know if he wishes to speak. Apparently, he sent a text message indicating he would like to speak. Mr. Okay. Lake, are you there? Am I unmuted now? Yes, Mr. Am I unmuted now? We hear you. Yes, go ahead. <clears throat> Mayor, council members, it's a pleasure to be here on this side as a neighbor. Uh, it doesn't happen very often. Uh, my family, uh, we've only been part of Mesa. I'm finding out I'm a newcomer. Uh, we've only been part of Mesa since 1976 with Golden Hills and, and Bush Highway out there. My wife and I have lived here uh, up on the Mesa, just up on the Mesa for about 27 years, uh, just up the hill. And so we've known about this project. I, I, kind of Googled mapped a lot of people that spoke. We live closer than most people that spoke here this evening, but uh, we live just up the hill and we have known about this and we have uh, been involved and a lot of my neighbors know what's going on. So I know that was a question. Do the people up the hill know what was going on? Yeah, we've known what's going on. This has been an extremely unique piece of property for a very long time. This is where my children learned to ride motorcycles and learned to drive cars. And there's really been nothing done on this property for a great deal of time since the freeway went in and really created this isolated hole. If you sit on the property or you, you're watching your kids ride their motorcycles, you really do sit in a hole surrounded by freeways and roadways and canals. You're just kind of unto yourself. And so I agree with Mr. Baugh on his statements about that. Um, 
I think what they have done, the concessions that they have made along the way make this a good project. We think this is a good use for this property. Quite frankly, I think it should be a more intense use, like a, a retail gas station or industrial development, but I don't think that would go over well. I think this is a good compromise use. I think this is a good use that will provide a housing opportunity for my children, my kids. We've raised our killed children living here in the last 27 years. And there's not a lot of places to go for them to go buy homes in Mesa anymore because of what's happened over the last five years. And so this will provide an opportunity for my children to find a place to live. And so I think that's a good uh, outcome of this development. I think they've made great concessions. They have great buffers on the north, a freeway, great buffers on the south, the Mesa and the, and the canal and east and west. And so it's surrounded by great buffers. It really doesn't impact anybody. The traffic will go out to McDowell and those of us that take McDowell many times every day is not as busy as it could be. Certainly not as busy as McKellips. And so the, the uh, McDowell Road certainly can handle the limited amount of traffic that would uh, be produced here. Would I prefer a park here? Absolutely, but I don't think all of the residents of the city of Mesa think that's the case. But if the city council wants to build a park here, they certainly at any time, even after the vote tonight, can come buy this property from this property owner and build a park. But I don't think that's in the cards. I think what's in the cards is a good development here that my children will be able to have an opportunity to live and other people's children will have an opportunity to live. I think this is a good concessions, good compromise, good changes. I think this is a good project that should be, should be supportive in my neighborhood. I live just up the, the Mesa from this project. So with that, I, I, I support this project and, and urge you to do so. Thank you, Mayor. Did I make it under three minutes? Uh, yes, I think you did good. Your timing was right on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lake. Our, Perfect. I, Thank you. I believe that concludes all the blue cards, all of the folks on the line. We've heard from the applicant council. Uh, any council members wish to discuss these items? Ms. Spilsbury. I just wanted to ask Mary, maybe if you could tell us from your point of view how it complies with the general plan. I think that's a valid point and that we need to make sure that we're looking at that. So the general plan designation on this is the neighborhood. And so that obviously is um, promoting residential uses and it's a suburban. So it's re the, su the sub area type is suburban. It fits within that character area for those residential type uses within that general plan designation. Okay, thank you. Um, I grew up in Mesa and I, I grew up in North Mesa and um, I thought until just a few years ago when I got on council that Lehigh was its own town. <laughs> I didn't even realize that Lehigh was just a part of Mesa. That's how special and unique you guys are. And I had lots of friends that lived in Lehigh and um, I, it's a beautiful area and I love it. And I, I, even when it means that you're unhappy, I love seeing residents get engaged and come. And I read all of your emails. Um, I've, I've listened intently to all of your thoughts and feelings and I, I wanna thank you for coming. Um, and and being here to participate in the process because it's so important. Um, I a similar project in my district. Um, I talked to the I reached out to Mace Public Schools and talked to them about the same concern. Um, and I was told around almost the exact same number, just a little bit over 200 units would be about 30 kids. That's it, not 500. So it's way way less than I, what I thought too when I asked. Um, with, the, with the one and two bedroom as stated. Um, I also just, I was gonna say what, what Sean just said is that um, I have six children and a lot of them are entering young adult stage and I want them to stay in Mesa and I want them to live here. And there's not a lot of places and I would love nothing more than for them to get an apartment in Lehigh with these wonderful neighborhoods and wonderful peoples and wonderful churches and, and a place that we're, right after they get married, they could rent an apartment here and that they could be a part of your community. Um, it would be a great place um, for them to come. And so anyways, I have a lot more thoughts and stuff, but I, um, I've really looked into all the safety concerns. Um, I feel really comfortable that the roundabout, um, you know, it, there's obviously, it's been mentioned, but the death number just decreases drastically um, at that slow speed. And, I, and I, so I feel good that that is the right way to go with this roundabout. So those are just some of my thoughts um, and, and why I will be in support of this project. Thank you, Ms. Spilsbury. I know Mr. Freeman has 
Mr. Chairman, you want to go ahead? Yeah, so while you have Barry queued up, let's talk about the historic uh, designation and tags and when that happened, how that happened. Can you give us some dates and timelines and what the council action, if it moves forward, what that will do tonight? So one of the requests of city, sorry, Mayor Council, one of the requests of the city council tonight is to remove the historic overlay. And back in April of 2010, the Historic Preservation Board actually made a recommendation to remove that historic overlay because it was a fire on the site that had destroyed the buildings. They were removed. So the, the historic value of the site really was lost when those buildings were lost. So one of the actions that City Council will make tonight is the, in the request is the removal of that historic overlay, which was a recommendation from the Historic Preservation Board back in 2010. And that should have probably been done sooner than tonight, obviously. It was just probably omitted through time, or it probably, or has it happened to, during the rezoning process? It, it's happening through the rezoning process um, to allow the development to occur. Had another project come in on that site, it, it probably should have come to city council sooner than where we are today. Okay, thank you. Well, I do have some comments because I, I wanted to be very thorough on what I said, and. And I appreciate all of you, some of you are my neighbors and friends, and yeah, this has is, this is, uh, been very important to me because we all have a passion for our neighborhoods, and I've had many meetings on this parcel for the past two years, trying to work out different issues on it. But this parts, parcel has been available to purchase for the last 16 years. It's been available, and it does have a historical significance for Lehigh. In fact, I'm gonna get a little historical on you, my great-great-grandfather homesteaded this ground, and he raised his family there. His wife lived there. He died in 1890, and then his wife lived there for a period of time, and then she could no longer manage the farm. She moved to Mesa. Then her two sons took over the property, divided it up, and farmed it uh, for many decades. So I remember taking my grandfather out there to visit his cousins, and even then, the farm itself was very dilapidated, it was poorly taken care of and the orchards were falling in disarray. Today, as been pointed out, I've been out there many times through the years and my elected position has turned into a trash collection, a place for urban camping, graffiti, drug use, as well as illegal ATV, dirt uh, riding, sex trafficking, motocross activity and more. In fact, I've requested our transportation and police department to monitor this area and they do that quite frequently. Our transportation paints, uh, covers the graffiti in the tunnel um, probably every two weeks, and that comes at a cost for our people here. I can see a resurrection into a beautiful development where this will complement the area and provide a diversity of housing that we desperately need. The developer for this project is making a significant investment, approximately $70 million, to make a luxury market rate professionally managed apartment complex. I have spent additional time working to make sure that the unused portions of the land would be integrated into the project and would be contiguous to the $5.4 million trailhead that we will be building this year just on the other side of the McDowell tunnel head. This will make it a safe and desirable access for all users, including our equestrian users, which January 30th this year, I participated in a trail ride from Val Vista cul-de-sac on the Canal Bank utilizing all the assets that we have. There are 55 people on horses. There are approximately horses and drawing wagons and approximately 90 people using this trailhead commemorating the Pioneer Crossing into the Lehigh area. This is something that is personal to me and I enjoy that. So this will be a desirable access for all users, including the surrounding neighborhoods for future planned and multi-use paths. As far as blaming the city, at this point, a buyer and developer are engaging in a zoning process. It is not the job of the city to tell the developer what they should build, but rather vet out any proposals brought forward. Staff has done their due diligence and is supported by the Planning and Zoning Board and is recommending approval. <clears throat> My colleagues and I spent an incredible amount of time to make sure projects are compatible with our respective areas. Sometimes there's a lot of tears shed and people are upset, but we try to make and work out the best solution that fits to everyone. I've studied the crash data on McDowell and Gilbert Road, the intersections, you've heard about that, the amount of left turn crashes that have happened there. 
and the damage that's been caused and the injuries. A roundabout will help mitigate that. And today, McDowell Road, the traffic count is at 11,000 cars per day on McDowell Road, and the capacity is 33,000 cars per day. So you can see there's not a whole lot of significance if four or 500, 1,900 cars use that per day. There is a good neighbor policy in, in place that protects the homeowners on top of the hill. You know, Mesa is a family city. The Mesa average rent for an 850 square foot apartment is, if you want to guess, between 15 and $1,800. They say 30% of your gross monthly income should go towards rent. To pay a $1,500 housing cost, one would need to make $6,000 a month in income. That would translate that that person would make $72,000 a year in gross income. This is the reason for these apartments is as for our skilled workforce, our young professionals that Mesa needs to continue to attract economic development and jobs in our city. This housing is for our young families, our sons and daughters, grandparents, parents who want to stay in the area but cannot afford a 600,000 plus uh, house in the area, a single family home. I know our area is special. I live there too. There are families who want to downsize and new families that will grow. It's important that we create a variety of housing for the area, for everyone can stay in the area. This project will pay tribute to the history of the area by having design elements that capture the historic significance of the Christman Homestead. These are many reasons why I support the project and look forward to be added value to one of Mesa's great historic areas. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Other comments? Uh, I'll weigh in. Uh, I'm pretty sure I live closer to this than anyone who has spoken tonight. I have lived in the neighborhood adjacent to this property for 30 years. Uh, 30 of the 62 years that I've lived in Mesa, Arizona. So I'm, I'm very familiar with this piece of property. And I was always pretty pessimistic that it would ever develop, given the, the challenges that are tied to this piece of property. It, as has been indicated, this is an island that was created by the development of the 202 freeway. Uh, and um, I won't tell you the things that I personally have seen and, and heard and found uh, on this property and on the uh, Sheep Herder Park property adjacent to it, but, but the status quo of this property is not good. Uh, this is not something to preserve. This is something that needs to be rehabilitated. Uh, and again, I've been very pessimistic that that was ever going to happen given the, the challenges, the topography. Uh, I just didn't see how anyone could come in and do it cost effectively. So I've, I've been very surprised uh, that this developer has been been able to, to, to make a proposal that makes sense. Uh, I can tell you all the, the wish list that I've heard from people about what to do with this property, none of that is possible because of the development costs to make that property accessible and to, to have to provide the infrastructure that's necessary for that property to be developed. So uh, this is the only viable solution for this property. I, have, uh, I was on our council when this property was purchased from the Crisman family. Uh, I was on this council when we made the decision to put the pedestrian underpass uh, underneath McDowell to connect this property with the, with the property to the north. Uh, ever since that was constructed, the pedestrian bike horse canal or a pathway that's been through there uh, has been very underutilized and has been uh, not a good place. A lot of nefarious activity occurs there. I'm excited that with the, the, the potential for this piece of property because uh, we, we are, as Mr. Brady indicated, spending many million dollars to the, to the north of this to create a trailhead that's going to give recreational uh, access to the people of Mesa to, to utilize that wonderful canal that goes from McDowell uninterrupted all the way up to the Granite Reef Diversion Dam. It's a very unique and wonderful trail, uh, six miles uh, where you can hike or bike or ride a horse and you won't interact with any uh, vehicular traffic. Uh, that's a very special piece of property. And this, uh, the improvements associated with this uh, apartment complex are gonna allow uh, for the folks who live in my neighborhood to the south of this property 
uh, to access that pedestrian underpass in a safe way uh, for the first time ever. So that was one of my uh, asks for this development to go forward is for them to, to improve that part of this project so that the public would have access. So it wasn't just a, a development for, for the, those who live there, but also for the communities, the, the neighborhoods that surround it. So um, there's been a lot of great questions raised tonight. I, I appreciate the, the passion of the residents of Lehigh. I assure you that if we thought this was Lehigh, we would fall on our swords to protect it. Uh, everyone is, is very committed to preserving Lehigh, keeping Lehigh, Lehigh. Uh, I honestly can tell you this is not Lehigh. This is a remnant piece that was created as a result of the freeway. Uh, and it's, like I say, not something we, we want to preserve. This is something that is in desperate need of rehabilitation. Um, so for all of those reasons, I, uh, I, I appreciate my, my council member, Mr. Freeman, representing me and my neighborhood. He's been relentless uh, for the last couple of years in holding the, 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 this development to some very high standards and chasing down every rabbit hole of possible concerns. Uh, and so I, I appreciate the time that Mr. Freeman has spent on this. So having, having said that, uh, I can tell you, if I wasn't the mayor, I would be sitting out there and I would be arguing for this zoning case uh, on behalf of my neighborhood. Uh, and if I didn't feel that way, I, you know, there's not enough money you could pay me to, to vote for a zoning case that, that I thought was gonna be detrimental to my neighborhood or that I thought was gonna uh, detract from Lehigh. All right, having said that, um, I see the it, council, any additional discussion on this case? I see that Ms. Spillsbury has made a motion seconded by Mr. Freeman for approval. Please vote. All right, uh, the voting is unanimous in favor of uh, the agenda item. The next, uh, thank you very much uh, for our, everyone who came. We appreciate your passion about your neighborhood. We appreciate you coming and uh, sharing your, your thoughts with us. Uh, the next item on our agenda is items from citizens present. Ms. Mosley, I have two requests to speak. Do you have anything in, more than that? No, Mayor, they're the only two. All right, thank you. We'll begin with Gail Merritt. Gail, are you still here? She's here. Okay, thank you. Yes. Welcome, Gail. You have Hi. three minutes. Thank you. Um, good evening. Um, my name is Gail Merritt. I live at 2863 East Fountain Street. Um, there are two homes in my neighborhood that have, one, one home has a group home for disabled and another home has assisted living in it. And those two homes have never bothered me the whole time I've lived in the neighborhood. A year ago at 2865 East Fox, which is just a street north of me, I found out from a friend that there was a felon recovery house that had gone in next door to her. And other than them um, lighting a lot of fireworks, there ha has been no problem with them. And so I haven't thought about it very much until um, about a month ago, I noticed people moving into the home across the street from me. And I couldn't really tell who the mom and dad were, you know, because I usually go over to visit and introduce myself. Um, but I couldn't tell who was moving in. There were a lot of adults going in and out. Um, on the 21st of January, police were there in front of the house. They had been called to break up a home between, I mean, break up a fight between residents in the, in the house. And then as the police were there, an ambulance showed up and took away a um, resident that had overdosed. Um, the police told our neighbors that, that, that the, new ho the house across the street from us was a substance abuse recovery home. Um, when I found this out, I called my neighbor and friend, Mike Kennington, who I know you all know. He's a neighbor. He told me to call Mark Freeman, who is an old friend of mine. Um, sorry. Did I? No, you're fine. Okay. Keep going. It, did I say that you were It was old? an inside joke. You can't drop Mike Kennington and Mr. Freeman's name and not get a reaction in this way. Okay. okay. Are, do you, are you enemies or something? No. <laughs> okay. We're good friends. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Um, 
So I have put in a complaint at the code compliance um, about what's going on across the street. Um, uh, two weeks ago, I was outside working in my front yard, and I heard the screaming and the, and verbal abuse and uh, cussing going on. And noticed the the neighbor across the street had their um, window open in, in, in their top um, floor. And um, then about four or five days later, um, I was standing in the front yard and I heard more screaming and yelling going on between a man and a woman upstairs. And there were three people that were outside in the, in the garage and I said, what's going on upstairs? Do you, should I call the police? And then one of the, the lady ran upstairs and then the fighting stopped. Um, uh, three of the residents who, who don't look like the normal residents in our neighborhood uh, were outside smoking. They were, on, they were sitting on the curb by the mailbox and a couple of children that I knew that, that go to Mountain View were walking down the street coming home from school and then they came over to my side of the street because they they, they just did, and I assume it's because they felt uncomfortable. Gail, you're out of time, so if you could just wrap it up. Okay, I'm wrapping it up. I don't understand why we have these homes in our neighborhoods. We've got, you know, nice homes. This is where my husband and I went to retire and to live out our, our lives. And meanwhile, we've got homes that we're, we're afraid of, of our safety. We are... We can see our home value plummeting, and I wish... We could stop having these kind of houses. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Uh, William Bodine. While Mr. Bodine's coming up, I'll just say, because these items aren't on our agenda, to both uh, Gail and William, we can't engage in a dialogue with you, and so, uh, but we can certainly talk afterwards. Mr. Totally Williams. aware. Thank you, Council. Ahead, it's been a long evening. My name's William Bodine. I live at 2847 East Fountain Street right across the street from this new drug house that came into our neighborhood. It's not very fun, is it, to have a drug rehab house next door to you or you or you? Because uh, you think of your safety, your children, your neighborhood, your friends, seniors who've retired there. We want to retire there. I don't know now. I don't know now. What's unique about this is that they are not in compliance with regulations. They're not registered with the city of Mesa. They started this without registering, letting them know that you're you have this house in our neighborhood and they're operating a business here. You know, if I decide to start a taco shop tomorrow at my home and I had the police come out two times, have a drug overdose, have a transient walking up and down our street and even invite it into the drug house, you wouldn't extend them any benefits. You wouldn't extend them any extensions to say, hey, get, get your act in court. We'll give you another month to get your registration complied with. No, you'd shut me down. You shut me down within several days. So think about that as we struggle as these neighborhoods. We, we're in the nice niche market. We don't live in the million dollar homes. We don't live in the $300,000 homes. We're right, right in the middle. And it's profitable for people to try and come in without being registered with the city of Mesa and take advantage of that. Additionally, this drug house is, shares a back wall with this other house this correctional facility house, police have already said, we've seen needles on your street. Not, never heard of that before in the years that I've lived there. We have transients walking down our street now, pushing shopping carts with their belongings. Never been there before. What can be done? You have the capacity. I saw it tonight. You changed the zoning. You did it. You can do that if you want to. You can look at the codes. Have they violated the codes when they remodeled the house? Do we check to see if they actually kept those codes in force? I don't know. Uh, I guess I have to talk to the code department and find that out. So you can make that choice. You can decide not to have a network of drug houses in our little community. How many more can we have? How many more are gonna come here as a developer and try and put another drug house in because it's profitable to that? LLC that is, resides in Tempe, doesn't have to deal with it. Um, enact new codes and zoning ordinances. I've seen you do it tonight. 
and there were hard decisions made. Make a decision on this little neighborhood. Come and see it. Go visit the drug house. See what it's like. I'd be happy to sit on any advisory board that the council will put together. Ask me. I'll help. I, I, I'm assertive. I'm aggressive. You know, you can, you can fill these strip malls with these type of institutional residents. They're empty. Fill them up. Perfect spot for them. Council, thank you for your consideration. Good evening. Thank you for being here, Mr. Bodine. Uh, that concludes all of the items on our agenda for this meeting. Is there a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Mr. Summers uh, and Ms. Spilsbury. All in favor, favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you. We are adjourned. <laughs>